what I have, actually, right here, is I now have an f cube. I reduced it to that. Is I'm going to solve it as an f cube, but it might not be reduced completely into the right parity. So in order to solve this, if I were to solve it just like the f cube, I'm going to now start reducing all of these corners. Now that I have this reduced to an f cube, I'm going to reduce this to just a cube. So here's the green. I'm just going to line this up with the other green corner. And this is all for the sake of perspective. Now remember, I'm free to do any dino moves. I'm rather, I'm free to do any skewed moves. It won't destroy any of my centers or any of my corners. I've just got to watch my dino moves to just do the non-overlapping dinos. That's why I did it this way. So this is okay over here. And we might as well flip this where it's supposed to be here. So this is good, this is good. And we'll flip this where it's supposed to be over here too, just for perspective. Now, I'm gonna reduce this corner. So what belongs here? Well, it's gonna be the white and the red. White and red has to go here. So it's gonna be green, white, and red. It's not gonna be green and blue. Green and blue doesn't belong here. Green and blue belonged here. So we don't want that. So it's gonna be a green of a different color, green and white. So this needs to come up to here. And I can't dyno it this way. If I wanna make this corner turn, I can't do a dyno turn. I have to do a skewed turn. Then it can happen. Um, once I do that, I can move it up here and not worry about it because this is the center of another dyno. So I'm gonna turn this here. And now I can just dyno it up over here. And if I want, I can turn it back down. I'm gonna to try to keep maintaining the position of my greens as much as possible. So this is the proper green over here. So what I'm gonna to wanna to do is get the other green, put it in, and which other green is that gonna be? It's not gonna be this. It's gonna be the last green standing, the last one that doesn't have a place or a home. Uh, I suppose it'll be this, the green and red. Yeah, because this is going to be, this is the green and white, which is going to match with this, and green and red, which is going to match with this. So this needs to come over and join with this guy over here. So, what I'll do is I'm going to just skew this like so, and then dyno it in. And if I want, I can skew it back. Okay, so all the greens are still in the right place. Now what I have to do is put a red and white one in here. Red and white should be fairly easy to find right over here. So I'm just gonna skew this in a way that makes sense and put it in. Okay, so now this is in. This is where it needs to be. With that said, I'm gonna put all the greens back in conjunction with each other. That means moving this back like so, and then I'm gonna move this like so. I'm just doing skew moves right now, and I'll move this green one in. Again, just for the sake of perspective. So this is all correct, and I haven't touched any of my reduced centers. Now I'm gonna come here and put the final green one in. And that's gonna be the one with the orange and blue. So let's see, orange and blue. Here's a green, orange, and blue. I can just dyno this in here. So this is fine. Final green over here. Now I gotta be careful because I can't dyno it, I'm gonna destroy this. So I have to do a couple of uh, fancy footwork maneuvers here. So I have to move this in and then bring this up. So I'm gonna... I'm gonna skew it down, dyno this down to join it, like so. I did put this one out, but only temporarily because I'm now going to skew it back and dyno it back. That puts this back in. As long as I'm doing skew, dyno, skew, then I'm, then I'm okay. So now I've got this in. Now finally I'm going to put the blue and orange. Where is the blue and orange? It should be pretty easy to find. Blue and orange is actually here, blue and orange. This needs to come up to here, but i got to do that same technique. So I'm gonna skew this out of the way, dyno it down, skew it in, dyno it back. So this is good, and now all these three, or these four rather, have been reduced. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them back in alignment with each other.
I'm going to do my RIDARDs here. Again, if I don't do this, I could lose perspective pretty quickly. Turn and turn. And now this guy's got to rotate in. So turn it, rotate it here, turn it in, rotate it back. This is the equivalent of RIDIRD. This is typical skew strategy, nothing different and turn. Okay, so I, I have these four reduced. Now I'm going to look at this. Now here orientation means something, and remember that. These two have to be properly oriented with each other. And let's see if they are. Well, they're both not rotated up. To rotate this up, I have to rotate it counterclockwise. If this is aligned correctly, then this has to rotate counterclockwise if I turn it here, and it does. So, well, this has to rotate clockwise, and this has to rotate counterclockwise, actually. And so if I wanted to rotate this counterclockwise, then I would uh, do the down, down, up, up, starting actually clockwise. So I go down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up. And that puts these up and doesn't put these out. But here's something else that could have happened. Could have happened like this. Like this, where you have all these in and this one's up, but this one's rotated wrong. So this is a kind of a parity situation, but it's not because of reduction of these. We've already did, uh, done that. It has to do with how we reduce this. So what I'm going to do to fix this is I'm just going to turn it up. So now this is okay, but now we took this out from its proper reduced place over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this back in with this now reoriented. So I'm going to do a skew move like this to bump this out of the way. Bring this up with the dyno move to meet where it's got to go. Skew it back and then move it down. So now this is back. To which you might say, well wait a minute, you didn't do anything. This is exactly the same. Wait a minute, you didn't do anything. I told you you'd say that. I was right. Um, but notice over here, it, uh, this is also out, and that's the key with this. So I'm going to put this over here, move it back in, move it down, and move it in. And now we see that these have magically fixed themselves. So I did something similar with the F-skew, so that's not new information there. So now I'm going to put these in. Now if all is well, then what you're going to have is, uh, this is going to be the orange, this is the white. So here's, um, well, here's the yellows, which is going to go on the top, but this is the red and white, so this is the wrong one. Now here's two whites, this white can go over here, this orange matches with this, this yellow matches with this. So what you're going to have on these sides is you're going to have two corner pieces that are where they're supposed to be. It's going to be this over here, and that's actually, believe it or not, going to be these two over here. And among those two corner pieces, on these two sides, on one side, two are going to be aligned appropriately, and two are going to be mismatched appropriately. That's how it always has to be, according to the law of cubes. In this particular case, you can, o you can only have two in and aligned, and two in and not, and not aligned. If you had two in and two in, you'd have to do a single swap. And it doesn't matter what kind of a puzzle it is or a cube, you can't do that. If you're in a situation where there's a single swap, then you have wrong orientation of these guys. But we made sure that that wasn't the case. So here's what we're going to do to put this in. I need to move the yellow and orange one in, which is this guy over here. So I'm going to move this in a configuration over here so that I can bat this out of the way to make room for this. This is an orange and red, so I'm going to move this, I'm going to skew this out of the way over here so that I can move this down and then skew it to move this back in. Now when I move this down, I'm going to make sure that this orange matches this, this yellow rather, matches this yellow over here. So I'm going to move this in like so. Now I'm going to skew this back into configuration and dyno it back. This is in and now this is in. And now with that said, everything should be in and everything should be reduced in terms of corners. But just like with the F skew, I have to make sure I don't have rotational parity. So I'm going to start up here again and I'm going to put everything in, all the corners in, and see if they all match up. 
So go through the process of moving these in. Now this is no different from any of the other skew strategies that I've shown in the past. That's why I wanted to do all the different skew variations first. You can see the movement of this puzzle is kind of clunky. Anyway, this is in, look up here, and this is in. So this is a situation where I don't have any rotational parity. But it didn't have to happen that way. It could have ended up looking like this. Like this. So here you see this is all in, and these are up, but this is not rotated right. Uh, this is what happens when um, it's not a parity or an issue of rotation over here, where I just had to redo these guys. It's an actual rotation over here. So to get this out, the particular way that, that I've figured to do this is basically I want to move this to here, this to here, this to here. So I really want to take this or this and I want to move it to here. So that's what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is move this up. Again, this is going to be R's and this is going to be U's, scubing the U's and dynoing the R's. But this needs to come, well, this needs to come up to here. And actually this needs to come over to here. So that's what I'm going to do is put this to here. So I'm going to do Ri, Ui, R, Ui, Ri, Ui, R, Ui. Yeah, I did one extra R. Uh, no other U. So anyway, you think, oh, this is rotated. Oh no, we still have this here. But nope, we've got this here to make the parity. Fix complete, so turn this here, turn this here. That was kind of a quick commutator I designed to get out of that in a pinch. Now if I were to solve this, everything would be solved except one would be rotated out. We saw that with this guy over here. The problem is, to fix that, I would have to destroy the centers of, uh, of my scoop, and I, I didn't want to do that. So I just wanted to demonstrate that you can get that rotational parity, which is unlike any skew. Anyway, now these should be coordinated. This has to rotate. Um, clock, uh, counterclockwise, so I'll do a clockwise rotation here of a down, down, up, up, down, down, up, and up. And now it's fixed. Now, I assume not too many people have this puzzle, but I figured I'd go through every scenario just in case you have a puzzle similar to it. But now we need to continue our reductive process and reduce the rest of the centers to where it's all of one color. And this is done just like these portions of the F's cube. With the possibility, once again, of parity, but let's see what happens. This is going to come down here. Now remember, I want to do three at a time, or eventually have three and then do another three. So nothing's in, so why don't we at least put in two? So th this, once this is down here, is going to exchange with these centers. So the yellow one, the orange one, if I put an orange one here, it's going to match with this. So let's go ahead and put an orange one on top, this guy here. So we're going to have down, move it down, then turn. We'll go down, down, up, and then we move it up. So then there are two. Now I just want to get one so that I have three left over. So let's see what we can do here. Now let's put this over here. Maybe turn it upside down. Turn and turn. This comes to here. And I've got to make sure I don't have green up over here because then I'll just have one in, which is what I want to do. Turn this in, then go skew it with a down, down, up, dyno it back up. So then there were three. Three. Yep, yeah, three. Okay. So now I just coordinate these remaining three. So this can come down to here. I find a red one to put here. And I should easily be able to find that right over here. Turn. Turn and turn. Just positioning that. So now this is positioned to get all these three in as this will come down to here. This red will end up here to come up here. This white will come over here to balance with this white over here. So turn it down. Gets my green in. Exchange with down, down, up. That puts the red one here and bang we got it. So now what we have is a skew reduction. So this is reduced completely to a skew, and now we're going to solve it as such, hoping that there's no parity. So we're going to get a side, green side of course, Green uh, here's a green and red over here, so let's move this into place, 
and we'll orbit this, turn it in. Next is going to be the one with the green and blue, which is right over here. Move this across here. Turn and not yet. And down you go. Okay, lastly, we move this one in, which luckily, all I have to do is move it here. Okay, so we have this part in. Now we're going to solve this, uh, finishing it, uh, the cube solve. Remember, this is not a super cube in that this is one color and not two. We see this one is in, so I'm going to take the yellow, bring it up to bring it down to here. Down. Down. Up. Up. So now I'm going to move this into here. And down, down, up, and up. So now I'm going to bring this down here, and then everything should be right with the world. Down, down, up, and, well... Put it up this way. Okay, so good, good. This is good too. Well, now we have a problem here because we have center parity. These two need to flip flop, but that's going to put these two out. So you can't have two out and the rest in. One, two, three, four in. So this is a similar kind of parity that we saw with the F cube, a kind of parity that you just simply don't get with the cube. This is the final kind of parity that we'll get. This is the uh, the third kind. I guess. So the way that I get this out, same way that I did with the with the F cube, is I have to flip these two sets, flip these two with each other, and then it'll be fine. So I'm going to take this, use this as a sacrificial lamb, and I'm going to um, put this out and then flip these two. So I'm going to take it out, like so. Once I've done that, I'll go down, down up and then bring this back. Once I've done that, I'm now going to try to rotate this um, blue. I'm going to exchange it with the blue. Now when I do this, I don't want to cause solving of this and have just two in, so this is a good configuration. This will just flip out these two and I'm not going to solve it because this yellow will end up here. So move this down here, like so, and do my down, down, up, and then move it back. Now, believe it or not, the parity has been taken out. I just have to solve for the blue one last time. And we can do it like this. And now I have to move the orange one in, if I can find it. There it is here. So this will come down to here. And this orange is up here. So now everything will be solved. So move it down and go down, down, up, and then move it up. Okay, so this is once again a reduced puzzle. Now, the thing about it is, I know it's a partial rescramble, but the cube solve is so simple, so straightforward, that I don't, I don't really feel like designing a whole algorithm to memorize to get out of this. Um, I'd rather just do strategy to place it, understanding where the parity came from and just fix it, and then do another quick cube solve. If I was going for time, then I can understand trying to do an algorithm to bring it in, but I'm not. So now I put this in. So let's try it again. Here's orange. Let's go ahead and put the orange in place over here. So down, down, up, up. Let's move the red one to here. So bring it up, down. Down, up, up. Now I move the red one here to flip this. Down, down, up, up. Now I'm going to move the orange here. Down, down, up, and up. Okay. Now you can see the parity is taken out because these are in, but none of these are in. So I've got three that are out and that's what I want. So I'm going to move this in first, this blue one in, down, down, up, 
up that predictably flips out these two, but that's okay, because now this white will exchange with this yellow, and all is right with the world. Down, down, up, up, as the final parity has been taken out of the puzzle. Now I have but to turn these in the proper configuration. You can see that these are out of sync, so I'm going to want to turn this in a way that keeps this out without putting this in. And that's not going to be counterclockwise, I'm going to turn it clockwise to bring this out and keep this out. So I'm going to turn this counterclockwise to make that happen. Counterclockwise this way. So, so that's down, down, up, up, and again, down, down, up, and up. Okay, now it's in sync. So looking at this, this yellow has to rotate clockwise, this has to rotate clockwise. So counterclockwise, down, down, up, up, twice should solve the thing and we are done. Down, down, up, up, down, down, up, and at long last, up, and we've Got it. The Dinos Cube has been conquered. The Dinos Cube is done. The purest form of a hybrid, not seen since I'd done this guy over here, the Super X. What's interesting about this process of reduction is we saw some interesting parodies with the Super X and the Dinos Cube, one of which is a rotation of a corner by 90 degrees, which you're not gonna see with another, a normal two by two. Here, you had the potential for that. You did have the potential to have one rotated um, corner 90 degrees. I just didn't want to show that with all the centers reduced because to get out of that would have taken out and destroyed the centers, forcing me to redo a reduction, but I thought I'd demonstrate it the other way. Now, what I'm going to do is having done this and having shown that the F cube act as kind of a, a template by which I solved all these other puzzles, and having demonstrated what is probably among the more difficult of solves with these, and also having shown that um, basically these can be correlated with other puzzles. With this, I took a Dinos cube, scrambled, reduced it to an F cube, which further got reduced to a cube, and then solved as a cube. But just like the Dinos cube and the Super X could be correlated with the structure and the function of a Diane Gem 3, this guy over here, which turns out the face, and really is in, is in functionality much like this, corner turner and face turner. This is correlated as a corner turner and a face turner. And also, having shown that the f cube is really functionally like the Diane Gem 5, where you have corners here that correlate with corners here, and corners here that correlate with corners here, and centers that correlate with these, pretty much moving the same way. So too, moving this here, the Dinos Cube has its own gem version, which is this guy, the Diane Gem 4. Looking a whole lot like the Diane Gem 3, except for the fact that you have corner turns, just like this, and you also have skew turns, just like this. So the solve of this guy is sort of like the solve of this guy, but I'll show you that this is a lot simpler than this because, well, you don't have issues with certain kinds of rotations. So what I'm gonna conclude with in the last part of our corner turning um, series, which was to demonstrate the corner turners and how the techniques can be correlated with other mass-produced puzzles. Not a lot of people have this, but a lot of people can get this. We're going to finish off everything with a Diane Gem 3 or Diane Gem 4 solve. Stay tuned as we get to the epilogue of our corner turning series. Thanks for watching.